What's up, YouTube? Curtain6693 here, here to bring you gaming and anime news, as well as anything that I find interesting. I wanted to take the time to, um, I want to take the time to talk about, uh, True Blood, Season 6, um, Episode 6. This is going to be my review for, for the, uh, for the newest episode that came out. Um, man, for YouTube Blood fans out there, Man, you know, um, I heard that, I've heard from several friends that there was a rumor that one of the major characters is going to die. Um, or at least, you know, one of the, one character is going to die, you know, that was going to be pretty important. And I was like, I, honestly, I didn't want to know that when they told me. I was like, I just want to see the series, see it, watch it, and just kind of go along with it, as, you know, as it goes. And, uh, spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead. It happens in this episode. Um... So, so if you haven't seen it, go see it before you see this review. Okay, so for those who've seen it, uh, I think his name's Terry, the uh, the one from the Marine uh, War and the and the the Fire Spear thing, whatever. He ends up getting killed, and how what happens is is, our I think her name's his wife's Arlene, and she goes to her uh, and then she uh, and the other chick who was with Andy, I can't think of her name. So I'm I'm bad I'm bad with True Blood names. I just know faces in relationships. Um, um, I know most of the main characters, but it's some of the small characters. I need, I need to get back on that. But I remember Andy Andy's uh, girlfriend and then Arlene. They get a vampire to glamour Terry, so so he doesn't remember the war and everything that happened, so he doesn't feel guilty about it because she begins to suspect that he's going to try to kill himself. And and the kicker is, she didn't know that he previously talked with a, uh, or, uh, no, no, yes she did, yes she did. She remembered that he did, uh, she walked in on him when he was talking to that other Marine veteran dude, but she didn't know that he told her to kill, that he, that Terry told the Marine veteran to kill him when he didn't know. Um, because Terry said he didn't want to know, he just wanted to just have a walk around one day and just get killed. And so, when the, the vampire glamoured uh, t uh, Terry, no one knew about it. Nobody, nobody knew that this Marine was coming to kill Terry. And so Terry was just going out, you know, emptying out the trash one day. Um, you know, because in, in the, the, the vampire told Terry, just remember that you're a father, that, you, that you're a cook, and that, you, and that you pretty much just love Arlene. Arlene, you know, everything that happened in, in, in the past, just forget about it. You know, it's just, just, it's just you know, something that happened, and you're, you're over now. And so he's op he opens up the, the garbage uh, dump thing, and bam, gunshot, right? And then right when it happened, I was like, oh. I knew it was kind of, I mean, I, I thought about that, though. The thing is, I knew, I, as soon as they glamoured him, I was kind of like, wait a minute. If they glamour him, what about the Marine dude who doesn't know? Because I, I knew, that's like, okay, I know. The thing is, I didn't think that the Marine dude would succeed in killing him. Because I didn't think he'd been the one to die. I thought that the Marine dude was going to try to kill him. And then that would cause a whole new drama. I didn't think that he'd actually succeed in killing him. Now, my thing is, I think that the Marine dude had been hiding in a dumpster. He must have been spying on him and knew that he was going to come out and dump the trash and hit a dumpster. Because as soon as he opened up the thing, bam, you heard a gunshot. Um, and then Lafayette heard it. Came, uh, no, it was some old black dude in the back. He came and saw it. Then Lafayette came. And then Arlene came. And then she, and then she sung some nursing rhyme to him. And he finally died in her arms. And it, it was sad. It was sad. Um, um, it was really, really sad, uh, to see that happen. And I wonder how Arlene is gonna accept this. Think about it, she's already lost that one dude from the first season who was, uh, who was the antagonist. I can't think of his name, but he had, he had that, that, that Cajun, whatever you call it, accent, and then he found out that he was the one who was killing everybody. Um, she, she lost him. Then she just lost Terry, and it's like, it's like everybody, she keeps losing people, so I wonder how is she gonna react to this. Um, will you guys, um, were you guys, you know, surprised by this death? Did you guys know it was gonna be Terry? Um, did, did do you think it had a good impact on you guys? How do you think you can, how do you think it's gonna uh, people are gonna react to this? You know, how do you think it's gonna play out later? Me personally, I th I do think that Arlene will get over it, but I think that it, it will be it, 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 there's gonna be some a lot of uh, a lot of sorrow, a lot of grief in, in the next episode, and probably the next probably for the rest of the season we're gonna see a lot of grief. So yeah, so that happened. Um, let's see what else happened. So. Uh, let's see who, who else was. Okay, Bill. So, Bill decides that, you know, he kind of see, yeah, he kind of sees that you pretty much, uh, things are getting, getting, 
uh, into motion. And I noticed that one theme that I can see from this season six is there is a big thing that's about to go down between the humans and the vampires and the, and the other supernaturals in general. Now I know it's kind of already getting started, but you can But I kind of feel like Bill is kind of like this pivotal role in what's to come. I believe there's going to be a. I believe if they do make a season seven, I believe season seven is just going to be war. It's just going to be straight war. And I and I think that maybe season seven may be the last season. And I think the last season is just, is just going to be just straight, just just straight war. You know what I mean? Just uh, just fighting. Uh, a lot of people gonna end up getting killed off. Um, but that's that's for that's for later. Um, but that, that that's just my my far off prediction. But uh, but you kind of see Bill. He he tells the Japanese doctor dude to he glamours him and he take and he has him take out all his blood and that way he'll be near the true death and then he'll be able to go into an unconscious and he he'll talk to Lilith. And I will say this though, I will say this though, Bill has got a mouth on him to be talking to Lilith like that. Cause um, in my opinion, I'm surprised Lilith hasn't shut him up and said, "Hey, stop bitching about um, your uh, life being sucky. You know, I've been I've been gone for thousands of years. Don't blame this on me." You know, hey, you know, I'm not. All, 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 all I did was just set up the set up the game. I, I'm not the one. Who, I'm not the one who made it go to shit. You know, she's the one who just started the vampires off. She's not the one who's caused all these terrible things to happen. Um, well, I take that back. I take that back because in the in the fifth season, she was kind of the one when they were drinking her blood. She was the one who was kind of egging them on to kill off all the humans and. And all, and you know, into uh, and then they decided to blow up the tank factory. But what I mean is, is their choices were their own. It wasn't. She may have, she may have influenced them when she when she got the chance, you know, through those visions they saw of her. But ultimately, it was their choice. It it didn't. That's what I'm saying. She's been dead for that, uh, for so many thousand years. Uh, so, so, so we know, you know, you can't, you know, what, what's been happening is I, I will agree with her. It's it's not a hundred percent her fault. It's every, you know, it's I mean, true, she's had a she she's been involved in it in some forms, but it's not a hundred percent her fault. You know, everything everything that's been happening has been everybody's choice, and people just fucking up. So, um, and so she pretty much tells Bills, you know, get the hell out of my face, you know, you know, hey, it's up to you now. Um, and so I wonder, I wonder, I really do wonder what Bill. Um, what Bill is gonna do? Oh, but before I get to before I said, uh, but but there there's more that happens. Um, Bill drinks the rest of Warlow's blood and he absorbs the fairy stuff, um, uh, that that fairy part of him, and then he's able to walk in the sunlight. I'm not I'm not sure this is permanent or this is just temporary, but let me tell you what happens. I did not expect this to happen this early. Bill goes to the governor. Uh, when he's reading like the Bible or something out out in the middle of the daylight, and he goes out, right, and the guards see him, and he he, he, he sprouts open his things, and the guards see him, and they shoot him, and he just and he just he just taking it, he's like, and you're like, okay, and then um, and then I'm like, yeah, that's badass, and then he some I think I don't know if this is like he and now it looks like he can use some kind of mind control manipulation. I'm not sure if it was him using the telekinesis, but if you like like controlling their individual body parts, or if it was actually him manipulating their minds, because he made all the guards point to ev point toward everyone and shoot each other, and then it was nothing but the governor left, and he actually, and the governor uh said you know well Bill said you know where where's my daughter? He I think he was talking about Jessica, and uh, the governor said no fuck you you know what about my daughter? Y'all y'all took my daughter made into a vampire. Bill said hey that's not my problem. You know, you're the one who's caused all this. And the governor said, uh, hey, you can kill me, but somebody else is going to take my place. And he was exactly right. Uh, well, at least I think he was right, uh, which I'll get to in later. But um, basically, and this is the shocking part, Bill, I mean, B yeah, Bill, he rips the governor's head off, clean off. He he bites him, then he rips him off. But he, he, the governor's gone. He's gone. Uh, so so she, uh, so yeah, he's gone. I didn't expect him to die so quickly, but I do think it is a nice change, um, like a nice change of pace. But yeah, the governor's gone. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think that this is a? Do you do, do you think this was a, was a good plot device? Um, me personally, I think it was excellent. Um, because I'm got I'm about to get to why later. Um, but yeah, th th this is another pretty shocking moment. What else happened? Um, I'll get to Suki last because her her. Her stuff goes to the to the to the end of the episode, but uh, what else? What else happened? Okay, Sam. Let's talk about Sam. Sam and Alcide. 
I will say this about Al Seed. Me personally, I think Al Seed's turned to an asshole. Ever since he's become the leader of the pack, he I understand that he wants what's best for the pack, but I'm sorry, but he's been treating even though I know his dad is not the best dad, he's been treating everybody like a dick. That one that one chick the one railroad chick that he was kinda, you know, fucking around with before he fought the uh before he fought the previous pack master, um, you know, what happened to that? I mean, is that gonna still is that still there? And then he met some new chick. And then hit the old chick was kind of like, as long as you know that I'm your number one. And, and I don't know, it just kind of seemed like ever since he, ever since he has been a, the pack master, it's just, he, he's been he's been a dick. He's been in a butthole. I mean, he, he hasn't really been showing compassion towards anybody. You know, and he's so quick to try to kill off, you know, just, I don't know, he just make I don't, I don't, I don't like his decision. I don't like, I don't like where his character's going. I, but you know what, though, I will say this. I do think that that's, that's how it's meant to be. I do think that we're meant to see our seed take a turn for the worse in this, in this season. Or kind of see him, because I remember there was something. I think there was something, I think it was either his father said or the grandmother said. And I think someone, one of them said that when you become pack master, you know, you get this power. But sometimes it can turn you to things that, that you don't want to become. And I think that's what Al Seed is coming. And I think uh, I, I think that's what Al Seed has become. But I do think that at the end of the season, Al Seed is going to get his act together. He's going to see, okay, I'm, maybe I'm not making the best decisions. So, but as far as Sam and Al Seed, okay, so Sam and Al Seed are not on good terms anymore. Sam just wanted what's best uh, for the girl. I think her name's Emma. And uh, and he wants what's best for the girl. Um, but, but the... Uh, um, God, I'm so bad with names, but the, uh, the one chick from the other shapeshifter, she's, you know, she's saying, um, you know, uh, you know, she's saying, you know, maybe what, what, what the things that you want, those, that, that's what's best for her may not be, um, exactly, um, may not be exactly what's best for her. Um, and so what Sam does is Sam eventually gives Emma back to the grandmother and you know and he pretty much says even though as much as, as much as I care for this girl she's better in your hands you're her family and I'm glad that Sam made that decision I do think that Sam and, and the girl should should keep contact um, you know like basically I, I don't th I don't think that their storyline should die off but I do think that I do think that ultimately her place is with the grandmother I think the grandmother will take care of her um, and I really hope that the grandmother could, keeps her. I hope she doesn't lose Emma again, which she probably will. Like, either Al Seed is going to come and snatch her away or something. But, oh, Al Seed, Al Seed, Al Seed. So, so we got that going on. And then as Sam tells Al, no, Al Seed tells Sam, he says, I won't kill you, but you better get the hell out of Bon you, you, I don't want to see you again. And Sam says, okay. Um, that, uh, uh. There, there is something that that, uh, that I saw in a sneak peek of the next episode, um, where but I'll, never mind, I'll just get to that later. I'll get to later. But um, let's see what else. Um, so this, so that happened with Sam and I'll see in the girl, that uh, the other shapeshifter. Um, but tell me, how do you guys feel about the relationship between Sam and the other shapeshifter? Do you think that it's a? Uh, in my opinion, I thought she was a little young. But I mean, hey, whatever. Hey, you know, if she's over, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if she's. I, I'm guessing she's over eighteen, of course. You know. Um, but I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying. I just thought. I just kind of thought it was kind of strange. I kind of like, you know, she's. I, 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 honestly, I thought she would have been around my age because I'm 20, and I, she looks like she's at least maybe 20, 22, 23. You know, and she doesn't look too young. I mean, too old. I mean, um, but like I said before, I don't know. Um, that's just that's just that's just something that I just kind of thought of when I first saw them in the first sex scene, uh, the first intimate scene. Oh, let me get to Jason. Oh my god, it's so many things happen in this episode. Let me get to Jason. So Jason decides to infiltrate uh, the facility. Um, you know, it's po he's posing as a vampire racist. Uh, but then when when Sarah sees him there, um, she pretty much asks, you know, what are you doing? And, and Jason says, I'm coming to rescue my friend and clean up your mess. And if you say anything, I'm going to tell everybody that, that, that you are a whore and that you you are with me and all this stuff. And pretty much you're going to ruin your image. And this is what Sarah did. Now, here's my thing. Sarah is a hot piece of ass. She is cute. Um, she really is. But I would say, man, this, this, this episode really shows how far females will go. Because, um, she, she, uh, takes Jessica and she puts her in a copulation, a copulation chamber, which basically they study how vampires have sex, 
which they say that they claim they're trying to study, you know, what turns them on, what turns them on their libido, bullshit, it's a, in my opinion, it's the exact same thing as humans, except it's just more, I don't know, vamp vampirish, it's the same thing, you know, they, they see something that turns them on, they get turned on, they have sex, it's the same thing, I, I don't know, but I, in my opinion, it's just their excuse just to see, just to feel, fulfill dark fantasies, um, but basically, uh, this is new vampire in there. I can't remember his name, but the you see him in there in the in a J in that and they take Jason in there and Jason's like, okay, so what? Okay, it takes two people to have sex, right? So one, what am I here for? And then it pulls out Jessica. And when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. So basically, long story short, they uh, Sarah set up Jessica to have sex with this dude in front of Jason, and that would pretty much cause Jason pain, and because pretty much Sarah pretty much wants to get out at Jason. Um, you know, and, you know, and you can tell Jason's like, oh, you bitch, but, um, I'm not gonna lie, though, I mean, I'm gonna, it kind of shows, man, man, females, man, they, they can really hit you where it hurts, um, so, basically what happens is, is, the good thing is, Jessica and the dude don't decide to not to do it, and they, and they, and they defy the orders of them, and, uh, but they, they end up getting taken away. And Jason's like, oh, thank God. But you can, but I can tell you though, Sarah is gonna try something new. She's gonna keep trying. Um, and and, and, uh, and you know, and now back to what I was saying about uh, about the governor saying that someone else take his place. I think that Sarah is gonna eventually arise as the new head. I really do. I think that she is gonna take the place, and and I do think that eventually is gonna come down to her and Jeff and Jesse in some way. I could be wrong. But I do think that she is going to be the one to kind of take up that mantle as kind of the the old the one in charge. Um, and there are some other things that happen in the sneak peek that kind of that kind of give more evidence of that. Like I said, and, I, and I'll get to the sneak peek at the end. Uh, but, but what else happened? What else happened? Um, so yeah, so see, so so Jessica, she's sitting there and uh, with Tara. Um, what else happened? What else happened? Oh, the governor's daughter. Before the governor dies, earlier in the episode, he goes to his daughter, and her and his daughter tells him that she wants to get out of solitary. She does not want to be treated like royalty. She wants to be with her kind, where they can teach her about her, you know, about her new abilities and about you know how to control herself. And you know, the, the and she's like, you know, why are you keeping me here? You you say you love me, but you keep me in this facility. And um. And just just to make the long story short, he she uh, I'm, she eventually gets taken out of solitary, and she gets put in with Tara, um, and then and then then the governor goes off, and then he die he later dies, and uh, and I don't think uh, his daughter doesn't know yet, um, his daughter doesn't know yet. Uh, what else? But yeah, th that's what happened with that. And then let me tell you what happened with Eric. Oh man. Uh, another thing that happened before the governor died. Sorry, I'm jumping timelines, uh, but I'm j I'm just going through different different characters at one at a time, and sometimes I may have to go back and forth. But uh, as far as what happened with Eric is um, it's crazy. So with Eric, uh, it's, it's so for you that seen that, you know that they had him after he killed those guards instead of killing Pam, um, which I I was surprised at though. I, uh, well, I was, well, I wouldn't say I was surprised. I knew that they would eventually turn on them, but I was surprised that they did so quickly. quickly. I thought they would kind of have a standoff, kind of like a talk, and then they'd eventually say, okay, we forgive each other, let's kill these motherfuckers. But yeah, they, they, uh, they kill some of the guards in the room, and then, uh, I, I can't remember what happens to Pam, but I know Eric is chained up to a wall. And he, you know, he gets chained up in his cage, and he's hung, kind of hung up there. And, I, and I'm guessing the cage is made out of silver. But what they do is, is here is the governor's ultimate plan. The uh, the governor, uh, if you remember Eric's vampire and vampire sister, they bring her into the room and she's chained up to this little like this little table, movable table thingy, and they inject her. I think they say hepatitis D or V, and it's supposed to be like lethal to vampires or something. And they inject her with it. And you see Eric, he goes ape. He's like no, and he he got his fangs out. He's making those, ah, you know, he's pissed off. And uh, and I'm not gonna lie, that I struggled on that. I struggled on that because I I really love uh, the fact that we kind of see the fact that Eric has emotions. He feels for his for his vampiric sister. You know they I mean they pretty much love each other. I mean I mean um, you know and um, and I think she and I like her character. I I, I really do. Um, and it, it it was just it was painful to watch. It was really painful to see. 
Um, but, but what else? Um, what else? Oh, and so what he does is, is you remember, he made uh, the governor's daughter to a vampire so he can summon her. So what he does is he summons her, and uh, and she says, oh, I have a, and she was in a, in a, uh, at a lunch table or something with uh, Tara, and she's like, oh, I feel sick all of a sudden, and then Tara says, oh, yeah, you're being summoned by Eric, so go. And so they end up sneaking their way to uh, Eric's place, um, and they uh, and they release Eric and uh, his vampiric sister, and then they go off. And then Eric kills a guard and then kind of like takes over his uh takes on puts on his suit and he and then he goes into the back laboratories to kind of see what's the like see if there's a cure or kind of see what's the what's the deal going on and and the scientists don't know that he you know that he's you know evil so he's just kind of walking around and he and he sees that the he sees the governor's true plan his backup plan the governor made a statement on tv saying that he would uh, as soon as everything gets under control of the vampires he was going to release True Blood, a mass production of True Blood at a discounted price, and you're like, oh, okay, so things, so things may be coming back to normal. No. So what he does is, is he injects all the True Blood with the hepatitis uh, uh, virus. So he was pretty much all the vampires were going to get it, and it was going to kill them all off. Now, me personally, I don't think this plan was going to work. I don't think it was going to kill off every vampire. I do think that he would kill off a majority of them. But I do think there would be those vampires who would be like, no, I'm not taking that shit. And then there will also be those vampires who would be like, okay, we just, uh, then, then, as soon as soon as the vampires realize that this, uh, this shit is poison, then they will stop drinking it. So, I don't think that it would have killed off 100% every vampire, but I do think that it would have been a major blow. Um, especially for their first wave of drinkers, and they're going to them drunken. Um, so yeah, that was his plan. He's injecting these viruses into in the, into the true blood, and he and he's going to give it out to the vampires, and it's going to kill them all off. Um, and I'm wondering how that's going to play into the uh, you know to the season the end of the season. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much what happens um, with Eric and them. Um, and then uh, what else? Uh, okay, and finally, last but not least, Sookie in Marlowe. So it looks like Warlow may not be as evil as we thought he was after all. Which, I'll be kind of honest, I did not see this coming. I was expecting him to be some kind of evil vampire, and there was going to be some kind of climactic battle between her and Warlow. And I, I was surprised, I'll be, I'll be honest, I, I thought that well, since Warlow would have been so many years old, I thought he would have been more menacing, more, you know, just more, you know. Um, I, we haven't really seen a whole lot. Um, from him, but I mean, as far as action wise, but still, I just, I just, I don't know. I feel like there's still something, there's still something off. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but um, but okay. As far as Suki and Warlow, now Suki, I don't know what to say about Suki. She kind of, she, she got me on this one. She got me in this episode. She, um, okay. So Bill summons Warlow, and uh, and Warlow and Suki takes Warlow. To the to a, some kind of fairy other world to kind of get away from bills. That way he can't summon there. And they tie Warlow up to a tree and they uh, with these special branches. And and then she casts fairy light on the on the branches so he can't break it. And um, because at night uh, he claims that he would try to attack some you know I guess vampire hunger or something. And um, and so they're talking. And Suki just you know just asks him you know. What? Why does? Why does he want her? You know, what's the deal? He pretty much. Long story short, he pretty much tells her that you know that he's been waiting for her for years, and that he's been he doesn't want to be a vampire, or at least he wants to. Or he doesn't want to kill or hurt anybody, and that by being with her, they can just feed off each other, and then they'd be fine, you know. And so pretty much, and so he's pretty much looking up to her. It's kind of like his hope for redemption, and she's and you know, and then at first you you think that she's like, ew, I don't want to be with you, but she does something shocking. At the very end of the episode, and I'm just paraphrasing everything that's happened. At the very end of the episode, she pull, takes down his pants. No, 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 no. For, before she does that, um, she allows him to drink from her. Well, before, well, even before that, she says that, um, sorry, but even before that, she says that um, um, a lot of people have called me a whore, a danger whore. I attract danger, I attract death. And she says, I, I, may, I may be a whore, but I'm not stupid. And she says, oh, but, but you need to feed. And she allows blood to feed from her, and then I'm not, I'm not. Then she does something like where she takes some blood from Wallow, or something like that. Like, and, and if I'm not mistaken, that's how you that's how you become a vampire. And because I remember Wallow said, you know, he needs her to become a vampire in order for them to be with to be together. 
So she he drinks from her, and I think she drinks from him. And then she pretty much long story short, she she takes off her clothes, hops on this junk while he's laying down on the forest like this, and they go at it. And you kind of see this light illuminating um, <laughs> from them, like fairy light. And I would say, I didn't know what to say to that. I was like, wow. So it kind of looks like, I think I think what happens to this is maybe Suki just say, you know what, to hell with it. I'm just going to go with go with it. Or, you know, and she said, hey, I may be a horse. So maybe she's accepted the fact that maybe she just likes these dangerous dudes. And she just silently just accepts it. I don't, I don't know. Um... Uh, do you think? But do you guys think that she that she's gonna become a vampire in the in the late, later in later episodes? And am I wrong? Am I saying is, is there something that I'm missing? Because from that's what I saw, um, and I know the other people saw the same thing. Um, this this was a crazy episode. And now let me let me get to the uh, to the sneak peek. The sneak peek. Uh, the next episode it kind of shows. Uh, I'm just gonna paraphrase. Um, uh, so basically, it shows Eric. After he escapes the facility, he goes to Bill, and he asks Bill to he asks Bill to heal his vampiric sister. Can't I can't remember her name either. I promise you, in my next episode, I will get better with my names. Um, um, and he and but Bill says I can't do it, and then Eric says please. He's pretty much like asking please heal her. Um, I think there's I think that Jessica is gonna become friends, and maybe even more than that with that one vampire that she was supposed to have sex with. I'm not sure. Um. I'm not sure this is my speculation. It looks like, and it also looks like that Sarah, uh, she tells the other people of the facility in a sneak peek, you know, people must not know that the governor's dead. Keep it under wraps. So it looks like she's the one in charge now. Like, and that's why I said previously, it looks like she may be the one who may take up the mantle. Um, as far as, uh, I can't remember what it showed about Suki. I can, I really cannot remember, um, if it even did show anything about Suki. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, and then I remember reading somewhere that it said that uh, that Sam is going to come back to Bon Toms, even though Elsie told him not to. So I wonder how that's going to play out. And uh, uh, and there and there's some other things that happened in, in, in the sneak peek, but I I have to I'd have to see it again. Um, but yeah, basically things are going to get moving. Oh, and there was one character that I also forgot to talk about, and that was Andy. Uh, long story short, just to make this really short, Andy talks to his daughter fairy daughter and she and her her name is now Adeline I think and her name and then, then and then she says she wants a long name to where she can remember her other sisters and her name's like Adeline Braylon something 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 so yeah but her her I, I guess we can call her Adeline I, if I'm not mistaken I think there is her name so basically she has a name now which about fucking time um um, and and I do think that uh that the that her that her being a fairy will take place, uh, will take a, an important role later on. Um, but do, uh, tell me, do you guys think that as far as the whole thing with Andy, do you think that uh, when how do you think that Andy is going to react when the, when the when the fairy mother comes back and she sees what's, what's what's happened and she sees how you know that most of her children are dead, but she did say make sure at least one of them survives. So I'm guessing she's used to seeing children get killed off. Um, but I wonder how that's gonna play off. Do you know? Do you think Andy will pretty much hate, um, you know, the baby mama for pretty much leaving him with all these responsibilities at the drop of a hat? Um, how, what do you guys think is gonna happen? So all, all in all, how did you guys feel about this episode? Um, I know this has been a pretty long video. Sorry, I know it's been long. It's just there's a lot to talk about in True Blood. I could go on and on, but. You know how do you, uh, but yeah, how do you guys feel about you know what's been happening so far? Uh, tell me about what. How do you guys feel? You know, like do, do, uh, what do you guys predict is going to happen in the future? Is what I meant to say. Um, so yeah, so rate, comment, favor, subscribe. Um, if there's anything that I missed, uh, you know, feel free to talk about it in the comments. Because, uh, you know, it's honestly, it's hard to keep up with everything that happens in True Blood because there are so many characters, so many situations. It's hard. It's hard to keep up with it in order. Um, yeah, so so, let me, so I thought this was a great episode. I love True Blood. I, I just recently got into it this summer, and I watched the entire series in like two weeks. Uh, oh, I, I got caught up in two weeks. Um, like literally, I, I literally just sat there and watched it like just just all day long. Um, I love True. I love the show True Blood. Um, I'm also a big fan of the show Spartacus and Game of Thrones. Um, and I may make some videos like about my my take on those as well. Even I know Spartacus is, is done, but I would like to make a like a video that just kind of goes through all of them and how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. 
Um, um, are you guys? Did you guys like this episode? Um, how did you feel about the whole Siki situation with her and Warlow? Um, how do you guys think that this season will end? Or predictions? Do you guys think that there will, there will be a, a seventh season? Do you think that there will be the last season and that it will just it's just going to be a huge war? Um, let me know what you guys think. You know. Um, all right. Curtain six six nine three out. Peace.